Thank you, Rabbi, for that very generous introduction. Uh, Mazal Tov, Ian, on your bar mitzvah. You were uh, excellent in your reading, and it was uh, really quite impeccable. And I have to tell you, having marked the 27th anniversary of my bar mitzvah just a few weeks ago, those candies they threw at you are the same ones they threw at me, so some things never change. <laughs> in thinking about my time with you this Shabbat, I found myself reflecting quite a lot about Noah, unexpectedly. Noah, as we know, is informed by God that God is going to destroy the world, and God tells him to construct an ark in order to protect himself and his family and to collect two of every animal. Sounds like the worst cruise ever. And he does exactly that. He constructs this ark, and the rains fall upon the earth. The earth is destroyed. And Noah emerges from the ark, and I find myself wondering what his mindset was when he emerged from that ark. As he surveyed the desolation, the destruction around him, the results of this cataclysm, I find myself wondering whether he felt the way many of us have been feeling over the past year. Survival after something so cataclysmic, so destructive, so tragic. Now, of course, there are several notable differences between what Noah experienced and what we experienced just one year ago. For one thing, the flood was divine, and the events of October 7th, of course, were man-made. And Noah was guaranteed safety, whereas many of us in Israel were not. But as he surveyed the land in front of him, he surveyed the earth, I imagine he felt very, very lonely. I imagine he felt, in some respects, alone in this world with everything that he knew before him, beforehand having been destroyed. I think many of us have felt very similarly over the past year, very much alone. I know that we in Israel, as we see how the world has responded to the events of October 7th and its aftermath, have felt very much alone. I know that many in Jewish communities around the world, on college campuses and elsewhere, have also felt very much alone. And I wonder if the sense of loneliness binds us with Noah at his time. But the reality is that Noah was not actually alone. Because, as was mentioned earlier, Noah had his entire family with him in the ark. And when he emerged from the ark, he emerged with his family at his side, and they set about the process of rebuilding. And of course, over the past year, we also have not actually been alone, because we've had one another. We in Israel have felt intensely your love, your support, and your solidarity, which has been expressed in so many ways. Many of you, including in this very hall, have put your feet where your hearts are and have actually come to Israel. Others have sent packages of food and other items to Israel to support families in need, those who have been displaced, the families of the hostages and of those who have been killed. And it's reminded us that at the end of the day, we're not actually alone. We have one another, and that will carry us forward. And I think it's notable that the end of this week's parasha, which was read so beautifully earlier on, is all about Noah's genealogy, his descendants, those who came after him. And I think the lesson there is that there is a future, that even after a cataclysm, an act of tremendous, tremendous destruction, we can and should and must rebuild. And I know that that is what we in Israel are committed to doing. I know that that's what you will all be doing in Jewish communities around the world. And I hope and trust and know that we will do that together. Thank you all so very much for your hospitality and Shabbat Shalom.